Good morning, uh, I'm Brian McCrindle and uh, Anne Rowley is my co-chair. Uh, welcome to Wednesday, day two of our meeting. So uh, just uh, to run over the program, we're, we started today with a uh, panel discussion around uh, mouse models for Kawasaki disease. There are two main mouse models that people have discussed, a lactobacillus uh, KCI cell wall extract and a candida alpha Albican cell wall abstract uh, model in mice. And these models have proved uh, somewhat useful uh, in identifying some of the immunopathology behind Kawasaki disease, identify uh, new targets for potentially uh, developing new therapies or to test uh, new therapies. Uh, the coronary arteritis that the that is induced in these mice does mimic uh, reasonably well the pathology and the histology. Uh, some of the interesting things that are going to be presented uh, later on this morning uh, include how the gut microbioflora um, might influence the vasculitis in these models, uh, how specific therapies might be tested in these models such as uh, an anti-IL-1 receptor blocker, uh, uh, an angiotensin uh, receptor blocker, losartan, and uh, ulinosatin. So uh, interesting to, uh, another interesting way that we can trial out new therapies uh, before they hit trials in humans. Then we're going to proceed to a couple sessions on diagnosis and biomarkers for Kawasaki disease. So while we're all trying to determine the etiology of the disease, which will be the most effective way of developing a diagnostic test, we all recognize that while we're working on that, we still need to uh, try to identify other means to make diagnoses more effectively. So we're going to have a number of presentations on a variety of either serum markers that may assist with the diagnosis of Kawasaki disease or various um, molecular tests such as transcriptional profiling um, and, and even um, uh, tests that include some clinical and some laboratory uh, components to try to help us to make the diagnosis, and particularly in, in cases where it's not an absolutely classic uh, presentation. We'll also have a number of presentations that will talk about various clinical aspects of um, presentation of Kawasaki disease that um, may be useful to us in, in either establishing a diagnosis or um, helping us to better understand the disease. We also have the lunch symposium today, um, which is going to be a couple of presentations on uh, the immunology of Kawasaki disease, particularly related to the role of um, the FC gamma receptors in, uh, in the illness. And then uh, after lunch, we have uh, our Hideko Ogawa Memorial Lecture uh, that will be given by Jane Neuberger. Uh, clearly, Kawasaki disease is a rare, rare uh, disease, and the outcomes are rather rare. So we have a number of challenges in trying to perform new clinical trials about therapies. We know that uh, gamma globulin and aspirin are established as primary therapies, but some patients are resistant to initial treatment, and some people develop coronary arteries, artery aneurysms, despite the fact that they've had adequate initial treatment. So there'll be a number of uh, abstracts that will be looking at risk factors, risk scoring system, prediction scoring systems for these two outcomes, and then a number of abstract presentations about different ways that we can look at IVIG non-response. Uh, an interesting abstract will look at, at detailed uh, patterns of temperature profiles, uh, uh, studies of adding in additional primary therapies to the gamma globulin, such as steroids, different types of rescue therapies for those patients who don't respond, including uh, infliximab, cyclosporin, plasma exchange, silvastat, uh, 
the Japanese have performed an important trial of uh, adding in steroids to primary treatment for those patients based on risk scoring systems that are predicted to be non-responders. And so there'll be further aspects about that those trials, follow-up, modifications to the RAISE protocol, application in other types of settings. Um, there'll be a couple of abstracts talking about some of the complications of acute uh, treatment, including uh, an abstract that talks about hemolysis and its association with the specific types of brands that might be used of gamma globulin. Uh, and a final abstract will uh, be some preliminary findings of using uh, statin as acute treatment for those patients who already are starting to uh, develop uh, coronary artery complications. So uh, an interesting session covering all aspects of the acute management of these patients. So yesterday you asked me a question, so today I'm going to ask okay. you a question. After, after this session, do you think that we will have a better idea about what treatment we should use for IVIG non-responders for Kawasaki disease? Uh, I, I, don't th uh, I don't think that we will, actually. Uh, the, most of the trials have been uh, somewhat equivocal, I think, in, in clinical practice, although I talked about a number of very specialized agents, most patients are still going to get either an additional dose of gamma globulin or a treatment with, with steroids. Um, these other agents, it's hard to figure what, what their role is eventually going to be. With so many agents in play, it's hard to know uh, and to study which one might evolve to be the best.